Well, hey everybody, it's Steve at Thousand Year Home. So, uh, been having a, a good solid day of rain here. Let me rotate. So that horse trough I had cleaned out and emptied before the rain. So I get about uh, 100 gallons of rain per inch of water off of this. Uh, it's just a gutter that I put up with magnets uh, on one side, the other side sheds. So I'm going to guess that that's 150 gallons. So I'm going to guess an inch and a half of rain based on that. What I'm going to do is take a walk about. I want to walk up and take a look at the road. I want to look at the little frog pond extension that I've done. Um, and just take a, a, a inventory of how uh, the small changes I've done are, are impacting the environment here on the farm. Hopefully for the good. Well, this is my little a pond extension, and I had wanted to uh, <laughs> I had wanted to put a little bridge right there. I've got that. That's a used cement I bought for fifty cents a bag. Under there, I have stucco. I have the earth bag that I'm going to use for the uh, house system, and uh, the goal is to make a little bridge here uh, with the buttresses, stucco it, do it the same system using the same dirt. But looky. Mother Nature came along and, and found a hole, filled it up. <laughs> My frogs are so mad that I'm out here. But uh, they definitely like this deep water. So I don't particularly care for the cattle coming up. So they churn this all up, make it super muddy. That's all right. I'll, I'll live with it. Oh, look, they will walk over this bridge when I'm done with it. That's what I wanted as a test. I see right there that the pond is breaking through. And right where it's breaking through, look, can you all see the fish? <laughs> I didn't stock this thing. <laughs> the little fish are breaking through. Uh, by the end of the day, I'll have a little stream running from there across there. These will both be level. Uh, I will end up pumping this out, watering the garden with it, um, and building that bridge. So I see the cows have missed. See where they've stepped off the bridge? and. Stepped over. All right, but fish, that's incredible to me. All right, so this uh, uh, used to be like that, just a, a swamp, but that's where I put my uh, back drive, and I've been building it up with clay. I'm going to walk across it and see how gooey it is. Well, it's not too bad anymore. I mean, I've uh, the first uh, quarter inch is slimy. You can see how deep the cattle are digging in. So for those of you who said I can't make a drive out of clay, that'll always be mushy. Well, yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, gravel would have been so much better, uh, but you're also wrong. If you, uh, if you build up clay high enough and you engineer it right, you can make it where it sheds water. And it, it, all these Texas roads in Texas probably have clay base. All right, I don't know if I have cattle in this field or not. It's in between rain clouds right now. Really pretty. Really pretty. Well, I'm going to go inspect the stock pond there, see how the trees are doing. All right, well, that fence post in the water, that was the maximum uh, diameter of this pond when I bought the property during a, a massive 10 inch rainfall. But uh, you can see that I'm beyond that now. And I have been for a little while. So in January, we've got a, a huge amount of rain. Again, it was uh, 10 or 12 inches in 24 hours. Really filled this up. So this is what my cattle drink out of. They get in there, they play. Well, I said my cattle. This is what the cattle get in, drink out of. And uh, along the edge of it, I planted red bud. And I planted, you can see right there, it's coming up. Looky there, the cattle haven't found it and ate it yet. So the trees are doing good. I'm super happy with this pond. I'm going to dig two more. I'm going to dig one back in that corner. And I'm building a two-acre pond way over yonder. When I get done with that, I'm going to extend this pond out into the pasture. Really happy. Horses are out with me. Blaze makes Hank babysit him. Hank would rather just be resting under a tree, but he's got to babysit. This is a little garden area along this fence. I knocked the, he had fire ant mounds here, and uh, it was blocking all the water from running to the pond. And Leah came out and 
planted cosmos and all kinds of things. The cattle eat them up as fast as they come up. But in addition to that, she had planted uh, the dogwoods that came in. And uh, that one didn't, didn't launch. Failure to launch. That one didn't launch. But looky there. Now that surprises me. Dogwoods aren't in this zone. So having any dogwoods at all, give it a try. That's uh, pretty impressive. And there's a Texas red bud along with... Uh, I guess a morning glory that'll choke it out. Let's get rid of this morning glory. There's also passion plants here. So uh, let me go ahead and put that there. So we'll leave the little tree alone. <clears throat> All right, very good. But the hogs have already dug this up. The cattle have dug it up. I'll tell you, you know, 30 acres of stuff for them to do. If you make one little spot that's your own, that's the spot they'll come and trample. It's amazing. I don't know if you could see that little cloud. There was a cloud of little purple butterflies. They're fast. They're pretty, too. All right, I made this as a test swale to see whether or not it, I could pull water all the way down to the pond. And looky, there we go. So now I'll drop in my box blade with the rippers, and I'll, I'll rip this out and make it nice and uh, replant it with with grass but then I'll I'll cut in and I'll take it all the way down to the pond so this is a problem during the rain sometimes the wind strong wind will pull my gate open because we're just latching it temporarily which isn't a big deal except I see cattle prints all over so now I gotta call my neighbor or the rancher and let him know I don't know if his cattle are in my property anymore. We'll dig into it and find out. It doesn't quite look like all 28 of them are loose, but I don't see any cattle prints. Double checking that. It looks like it used that yesterday. We'll start a rain in at 2 in the morning. Look, see, they came up and they ate the tops off of those sunflowers. Cattle are predictable. I don't see. I don't see where they're at. All right, double checking my ditches. Now, I wasn't here at 2 in the morning, but I can clearly see that water is choosing a ditch. Well, that's, that's good news. Real good news. I see a mud puddle here uh, I could fill in. Not bad, but a little mud puddle. Yeah, I don't know. There might be 28 hoof prints in here. Man, that's so, so annoying. But the ditches are working. The water is uh, is going out. Boy, oh boy. The last thing I want to do is herd cattle. All right. So, it looks to me like the cattle stopped here. And that they're there. Let me wander in there and see if I can herd them home. Well, I'll leave them beasts and I'll let Brad know and he can help me wrangle them. So what they'll do is they won't do what you want them to do. I'll herd them out of there where they're safe and they'll come this way. But now they'll all turn and they'll sprint that way towards the highway. All right, let me walk, keep walking up here. I'll keep looking for cattle prints. But I think that's where we got them. Well, I could not be happier, though, with the ditch and a little bit of mounting. Last year, well, before I cut this, in the spring, the uh, grass had grown up. And you can still see the green strip, but it hasn't been round up yet. The grass grew up and pushed all the water down the middle of the road. And we had huge mud puddles and no ditch. And I could clearly see this ditch is working out pretty good. Let me go over the top of the hill and take a look at it. All right, well, here's some spots that will need some fill. But I, I knew that. I knew that, that there would be some spots that need fill. Not too bad. I hear thunder building up behind me. This area at the top of the hill 
was just a huge bit of mud puddles and quite a mess. It, it's still not the best. But I do see the ditches work. There's a little bit of splash out and the ground is definitely needs some cliche on it. It is spongy. There's a lot of clay in this soil here. There's a little mud puddle I wasn't expecting. For those of you walking around with a cowboy in the middle of a rainstorm looking at his road, I know it's not cutting edge theater, is it? It's not Shakespeare. But for me, it's a living journal. And that's what I use this, uh, my share, uh, YouTube sites for is a living journal. And I go back and look and review these videos and see the work that I need to do. Which on this road's not half bad. Uh, there's a little bit of work, as I suspected, at the crown of the hill. And then uh, we'll go from there to all the way down to the road. I might walk to the rancher that owns those cattle and get them. I don't have my cell phone with me. I am getting to the point where I only have pick up my cell phone tw every other day. It's hard to reach me. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Well, this used to be a lake. And it's now a, a ditch, a flooded ditch. But I will fill that up and cut that out, cut the end of it out a little more. And uh, backfill that a little bit. And get some, uh, get that flowing down this hill. All right, let me go down this hill and see what's wrong. Now this, uh, this part has me the most concerned. It had the most clay. I dug the deepest, etc., etc., etc. We know from Lord of the Rings that when you dig deep, mm, you sometimes release monsters. Uh oh, here's some more cattle. I don't know if these are, are the, the lost cattle or if these belong here. So we'll find out. Some pretty flowers in there, thistles. Mm, all right, note to self this still needs a little more ditch and a little more filling, and I'm going to go with the filling. I want to push this where it wants to wash out over to there. So this will still need some work. Not as bad as it once was. Boy, it was just a whole recess here. Let me see if I can see what the tags are in this cow, and that way the rancher will know if they're his tags. Well, they're untagged. So I know that they're not my rancher's cattle. I suspect right where I saw their foot footprints in that's where they ended a little angry bull eyeballing me and then this thing just becomes clay I was worried about that a little gooey needs some needs some gravel there's a spot I could cut that out with my foot right now let's do that cut that out right now all right well as I suspected the center of this hill a hotel needs some cliche on it. it is, you can see where the tires are digging in. It is very much clay-y. <laughs> That's the weakest spot in this road. Alrighty, so note to self, I will take care of that. I think I'll just order some fill in, a truckload of it. Dump it up and down that drive. If I could get this road done, then I can have a clear mind and work on some other things around my place. All right, let's take, check the last culvert and see how that's working. All right, this culvert, I'll have to uncrush it. It is crushed a little bit. But the, that field, I dug that out by shovel. The field's not badly flooded. Not too bad. I'll get my backhoe set up here. All right, and then there's another culvert here that's very... Then as I walk, when I find stones like this that'll get underneath tires or make it hard for me to grade, I kick them all in little piles and cup get them later with a bucket. Here's another culvert that I put this bucket here to protect everybody's tires. That's a tire slasher right there. All right. And I'm supposing it uh, pops out over here somewhere that I can't see. Long buried. <laughs> Alright. Looks good though. Well, thank you for joining me on this walkabout on the road. And uh, just uh, doing a bunch of mental notes, video notes, so that I could come back later and uh, plow this and add gravel and where to grade it and 
where the big stones are. And now I got some loose cattle that I need to wrangle up. They're not hard to wrangle. You call them, tell them it's feed. They'll, they'll usually come, but I don't think I could do it as a one-man job. They are incredibly suspicious, cattle are, and they will not do what you want them to do when you want them to do it. They'll, they'll pick up on that right away, and then they, they will give me what for. I'm kicking uh, stones out of the middle of the road, big ones, big ones, softball-sized ones. There we go, but that road behind me, man, a thousand times better. It's not perfect, but a thousand times better. It's a promise of a good road. So this is Steve, A Thousand Year Homes. Like, subscribe, follow me along. Thanks, bye. Well, this is me doing a little wrap-up video after the rain has come and gone. This is three days after, and let me tell you, this ground is as hard as it's ever been. It's been like a thousand years since it's had rain. But we know from the video that uh, this turns to mush with traffic. So I knew when I scraped that, that uh, there wasn't a lot of gravel because I cut in brand new ditches. I mean, it wasn't like gravel had filled a ditch. There just simply wasn't. But nonetheless, I went back through with my uh, little Mahindra and I box bladed and scraped it uh, while it was curing. The day after the rain, I, I could still get in and work it. Two days after, I couldn't. This is too hard for me to work. But uh, my ditches are... Mostly, with the exception, if you if you were standing here and you could see, I have a ditch there, a little uh, hill crown, and then another one there. So every now and then I had to cut into it so that the water would find a route over to the far ditch where I want it. Otherwise, it, it wants to run here. And uh, that's a little bit of a problem. And it does still want to, the middle used to be where, because the dirt came all the way in on both sides and this was a river. And uh, it still kind of favors the, the middle. So uh, I said a little bit of gravel. Those of you who, uh, those of you who commented, hey man, you're gonna have to put gravel in there. You're a thousand percent correct. Uh, I knew you were correct to start with. I just wanted to see how far I could get with what we had. And surprisingly, a uh, long ways. It's just this uh, two-tenths of a road out of this, I'm going to guess, maybe I'm a mile. But two-tenths of a road that's all clay and very hard to put anything on. Once it dries, we can drive on it. But e even with a little bit of rain, if it sits, it gets mushy. Now, it did not make the big, deep sinkholes, potholes. Uh, in addition, I'm moving off the stones as I go real please final analysis if i was to give myself a grade i'd give myself a solid b um now that's not smooth like a county road but i don't have uh you know heavy equipment but a solid b with using what i had where i'm at and how i'm uh what i got to work with so solid b so uh, once i put gravel in down this hill all the way up just a little past my truck it's all clay from the truck down to the bottom of the hill once we get that gravel once we get that gravel in it, it will be a solid road and uh, hopefully we'll just need light maintenance every year for for a while <laughs> i'm tired of working on roads i got my own house to build so uh but just as steve a wrap up of uh the road during the rain it behaved as expected even uh one of the neighbors stopped that uh, had been working on this and himself and he said oh man look you saw your ditches had water so even he was excited to see that the, the ditches had water indeed i was excited it's the little things in life like water in a ditch all right like subscribe follow me along bye